Will you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have brought us to the close of one year and the beginning of the next. We pray that your word would continue to uh, go into our hearts and our minds and and be with us all uh, throughout these days, no matter what the year is. I pray that my words not be my words alone, but your words to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Here again, the... uh, the last uh, couple verses of the epistle reading from Romans. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is our text. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Looking back and and looking forward. Now that's what we all do every year as as one year ends and another begins. Now in preparation for this sermon, I, I looked back at some of the most popular news stories from 2018. And I realized that I'd forgotten more than I remembered from this past year. It it seems like as I get older, one year just runs into another. And maybe you feel that way too. There were some good things that happened this year and some bad, much like the year before that. I I can't even tell you today what the the top ten best pop songs of the year were or or what the worst fashion trends were from the year. Uh, I, I don't even know what those were. And ten years down the road, you probably won't remember the specifics uh, from the news of 2018 or what what those things were, if they were important to you. You probably won't recall, you won't recall all all of the moments of stress and frustration, maybe from the news or or from uh, your personal life, that, that caused you to lose a little bit of sleep this past year. Uh, using an example, uh, I have already forgotten the specific papers and projects that, that caused me and my classmates at seminary many sleepless nights in this past year. But, but maybe 2018 was a big year for you. Now, that there's these certain joys that you won't be able to soon forget when you look back on this year. Maybe you remember celebrating the, the Jaguars' two playoff victories Yes, that happened in 2018. I know this past season wasn't very good, but they did win two playoff games this year. Maybe you graduated high school, or maybe you graduated college, or, or you got married, or someone, your friends got married. If you had kids or, or had grandkids. Maybe you moved to Jacksonville and, and stuck your toes in the ocean on Christmas Eve to the jealousy of your friends and family back home in the snowy Midwest. I will say one more thing. I have been startled by fireworks more today uh, than I remember back in Wisconsin. Not, not that there wasn't fireworks for New Year's in Wisconsin, but we, it was so cold that we were all inside, so it didn't matter when the fireworks went off. Now, switching gears just a little bit, on the, on the other side, maybe, maybe 2018 is a year that you would probably like to forget. This year maybe brought some challenges that, that maybe outweighed some of the positives. For many, this was a year of some sorrows at the passing of of loved ones as they entered into eternal glory. Maybe maybe you lost a job or or had some some health issues that caused this year to be more painful and frustrating than most. Now, I can't help, as I'm walking around the, the... Jacksonville Beach this today and the last couple days, there's a heightened optimism that this night brings for some reason. As the the ball is about to drop in New York City tonight and people all around the world are going to celebrate the end of 2018 and the beginning of 2019. If the past year was was dull for you, you think, maybe maybe next year is going to be a little bit better. There'll be more excitement next year in 2019. If 2018 was was great for you, well, maybe you think, oh, 
2019 is going to be even better. And if 2018 was painful, maybe you think 2019 is going to bring healing. The coming of a new year allows us to to hit a reset button, to to refocus on what is important to us. It, It brings something new to our lives each and every year. Now, for this New Year's Eve, we read Paul's great letter of Romans. Uh, And and our text is from his wonderful chapter 8. And this is a chapter in which a couple of friends of mine from college spent a whole semester uh, doing a Bible study on. It's such a rich chapter of Scripture. It's it's one of my favorites. And Paul begins chapter 8 earlier, before our text that Pastor read earlier, He talks about the distinction between living by the flesh and living by the Spirit. In verses 5 and 6 of Romans chapter 8, Paul writes, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. Here's another firework. Now, before you get the wrong idea about what Paul means by this past text, he prefaces it by proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. For those who belong to Christ, there is no condemnation at all. He has set you free from death and gives you new life. And this is because Jesus has fulfilled all of the requirements of the law the requirements of the flesh. Now, now we know this. We we know that we have a Savior who died and rose for us. We know that the law has no hold on us anymore. But I think sometimes we act like this isn't the case. Sometimes we like to live by the flesh. Now, how many of you create New Year's resolutions. You have created a New Year's resolution. Show of hands. Anyone? Yeah. yeah. I remember doing those in elementary school for projects. Most times they were very simple. Be nicer to my sister or, or clean my room more often or listen to my parents more often. Um, in, in seminary, we have even had to, uh, with the new curriculum, I've had to create personal goals for ourselves uh, in various ways to, to allow us to, to remain healthy. And, and goals and resolutions, they, they can be great. They, they're, it's so good to be healthy, to, to take care of yourself. And, and sometimes these resolutions can be spiritual as well. I, I think many people set a goal to read the Bible uh, in a full year. And we, we often set these goals and these resolutions with good intentions. And we think that with this new year, something's going to change for us. And for a few days, that excitement of the new year gets us, gets us through. But quickly, I think the new wears off. And we're back to the cycle of challenges that we had in the previous year. If reading the Bible or going to the gym was difficult for you to do this morning, it's not going to be any easier tomorrow morning or the morning after that. Even though the year is new, our frustrations and our stresses, they, they come back to us. And I, I know we're celebrating tonight, and I hate to burst your, your happy and optimistic bubble, but 2019 is not going to cause the pains of 2018 to disappear. The turning of a calendar page alone can't bring hope by itself. But hear what Paul continues with in our, in our text. He says, if God is for us, who can be against us? And the answer that that we we get from this text, the answer that we know to say is no one. No one can stand against us. And God is not for us because we have done anything special. It's not because we're celebrating a new year. It's not because, because we have set good spiritual resolutions. These are all, all fleshly things. God is for us because he loves us. 
And he loves us so much that he sent Jesus to die and rise for us. So when we are failed by the things of the flesh, God justifies us. And nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. So when the stresses, great or small, overcome us, nothing can take us away from the love that he gives. And I repeat that. Nothing. Nothing that happened in 2018, joyful, painful, or in between, can remove us from the love of God. Nothing. And nothing that will happen in 2019, good, bad, or indifferent, will be able to remove us from God's love either. Nothing. And that's the hope that we live with. It's not dependent on a change from one year to the next. It's not dependent on whatever resolutions we think to come up with or even if we succeed in doing those. It's not dependent on us even remembering what happens year after year. Nothing separates us from the love of God. Now, we look back on this past year. We look back each year on the examples of God's love, the truth of Jesus' coming, the celebration of his birth, death, and resurrection. We do that every year. We look back. And we also look back on our lives and the examples of God's love in it, and particularly that we are baptized children. We are his beloved. And even though we're looking back, we also look forward. We look forward to the, to the life that we get to live each year, in the peace of his spirit, experiencing his love no matter what is going on around us. And we also look forward to the day where we get to spend eternity with him. The, the passage of time, the changing of the years, will never cause those things to go away. So as we look back on 2018, we leave this year behind knowing that we are more than conquerors. We have endured and enjoyed another year. And we enter 2019 with that same sentiment. And I, don't, I don't know what 2019 with this next year is going to have in store for any of us. But there's one thing I am for sure, for sure, for certain. I know that no matter what happens, nothing will be able to separate you or me from the love of God that he has given to each and every one of us. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.